All right, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so um, so yep, if we are familiar with Synergy, um, uh, so Harmony is essentially um, an upgrade from it. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the um, the work that goes on the back end of uh, Synergy is the exact same in Harmony. You can almost think of it as an analogy of jumping from like Windows 7 to Windows 10. So it's a whole new interface, but it's going to do basically the exact same thing. It's going to be a placeholder for images and exams from all the devices that we can integrate in your practice. So, you know, things like OCT, visual fields, cornea analyzers, fundus cameras. Um, um, so they're all going to be exporting images and exams to one place. Harmony is uh, it's fully web-based. Um, you know, but right now I'm going to be showing you a demo site of uh, Harmony. And um, I'm going to be showing you, obviously, from the perspective on its own, how it's going to be set up when you go live. It's going to be accessible via hyperlink uh, through your EMR. So essentially, you'll be going into the patient chart and you'll see a Harmony hyperlink. And when you click on it, it does a couple of things. It, um, it gets past this splash screen here. It logs in for you. Um, and it goes right to basically that one patient chart that you're on. So I'm going to go log in and I'll show you. Uh, let's see. So right now, obviously things look blank. I'll explain that. So on the left side, you have this uh, basic search. Um, it's just a simple search box where you can search by patient first name, uh, last name, patient ID. And this essentially works though when you're using Harmony on its own. If you are using Harmony via hyperlink through EMR, it's going to look like this when you pretty much log in. Um, so you're essentially going to see one patient record like this. So if you are on this patient record, Norma Smith, you will get to this exact point and your only choice will be to select it to open it up. All right, so, um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you something um, you know, outside of using your EMR hyperlink, just in case, because it can be set up as a default setup. We usually set Harmony up on its own, just in case. If you are using it outside the EMR, you know, then you know, these features become you know, usable. So it defaults to today's only. So if your patient flow is 20, 30 patients, you'll see them on the list um, on the right side, um, or you can change the time segment to like the last seven days. Um, so your list may look something like this if you have it on today's only. Um, if you do see a list like this, just want to point out it organizes patients by patient ID. You know, you can click, you know, for ascending or descending, you can sort by last name or first name. Pretty much any of these uh, fields in the top uh, header here, you can basically sort by. And again, you know, I'm only going to just explain this really quickly in case you are seeing a list like this. Just so you know, the, um, the, the colors here, they have no significance other than a visual separator. So it's essentially, it's essentially pulling the patient's initials and it's just making that logo out of it so you can differentiate one from the next. Um, and this is a little bit more on the admin level, but if somebody were inclined to, you know, just make a correction in the patient demographics, that can be done. There is a pencil icon here where you have the ability to edit, um, but we're not gonna get too far into that. So I'm gonna go into a patient record and just chain, chain uh, excuse me, train from that one record uh, that I'm used to. <clears throat> Let me just go find it here. Um, let me go back out. And I feel like Zoom kind of, I don't know if it's Zoom, but um, usually when I get on these calls, it sort of slows things down. So, um, so don't be too, uh, you know, I guess don't be too under the influence that it's gonna run like this. I think in my training environment, things are a little bit on the slow side, but anyway, when you log into the patient chart, this is what it looks like, um, you know, by default. You can know, you know you're in the patient chart by just confirming up here, you can see that you're in it. And let's ex uh, explain the layout. On the right side, you have this, uh, it says three years. It's, it's a visual timeline. Um, you know, it's a little scarce because again, it's a sample patient. So there's not like a lot of realistic tests here, but I'm gonna change this back to a four year scale. You can scale this back as, as many years as there are, you know, exams in Harmony. So if there's like a 10 year or 15 year history, you can scale accordingly. So I'm gonna change this to four years. And what we have here, are modalities, right? That's what these uh, names are. These are different modalities, uh, which are, you know, they're customizable. We can, you know, if, if you're not, if, if you're not really liking the name ImageNet, you know, which is our fundus imaging software, we can change it to the word fundus. So it's to your liking. Um, these radial buttons represent actual dates, as you can imagine, right? So this is like a kind of a three-year scale or excuse me, four-year scale. And you can basically hit these left and right arrow keys to sort of, you know, 
pan across, you know, the timeline range. But anyway, um, you know, if you were looking at this, you know, 2020 year range, um, you know, or actually 2019, you can come over to this July date and just hover over it, and then you get the exact date. You can see that there was a, you know, ViewMax ultrasound performed on uh, July 16th. The cool thing about this, it's interactive. You can click on this, and you can populate thumbnails below um, just to get a quick preview. And we'll go into opening up exams in large view, but essentially you can double click on these and make them larger. So if I want to just see different dates, uh, different devices, I can just click on you know different radio buttons here and basically populate my screen below. And it actually keeps track. It actually highlights in purple, and uh, excuse me, it highlights in purple which ones you're selecting um, so that you know what you've chosen. And you can basically deselect or you can hit clear exams. The thing that's really useful though out of this timeline it's not so much you know, the individual selections uh, of the exams. You can actually select the, the modality name itself and get the entire history. So that's a cool way to look at a historical comparison. So for example, if I wanna look at this image net and just look at all of my fundus images for this patient, I can just click on that and then I get a full year or I get a full range of the fundus images, at least for this particular modality. Um, there is a duplicate one here called COA, but you know, again, you know, we can kind of be smarter in how we lump things together. So I click on it, it highlights the name in green, it fill out, you know, it actually selects the uh, radio buttons for me. And then I have my date ranges below. Each box is a different date. Um, all right, so that's one use. And I'm only showing you that as one possible workflow, you know, for getting exams on the screen. Uh, realistically, you're probably gonna work off of the left side. Uh, that's a bit more conventional. So, uh, and this is customizable, this is largely, looking like this based on how I set my user preferences, which we'll get into a little bit later. But anyway, I have it default listed by date. So, you know, ascending order, you know, um, or descending order, I guess, putting the most recent date first. Um, as you open up each date, you get this sub list of exam types um, for that particular day. And then you sort of follow along these, these gray fields. These are not selectable tabs. These are just sort of labels. So as you open up the date the first time, you can see like the types and procedures as you open it up the second time, then you can kind of see, okay, ImageNet device model, um, device name, ImageNet R4, these are customizable. So again, some of these things are not filled out on my demo site, but you kind of see the potential for this. You know, you can categorize your exam types. And then as you expand each exam type for that particular day, um, you can basically just do a quick preview as to, you know, what was, you know, performed on that day, what was tested. But anyway, um, so if you wanted to, you know, open up the individual, you know, procedure types and then populate, you know, your exams to the right side of the screen, you can basically click on these little grid icons, or you can just, you know, keep these closed, right? Keep it, you know, collapsed. And if you want to see a quick preview of just everything for this entire day, for example, you just come over to this icon, it says proof sheet, just click on it. And this is basically every exam you know, or image captured for that particular day. Um, I'm only I'm choosing sort of this arbitrarily like middle date because I know I have a number of exams I can show on that day, but obviously, you know, it'll put the most recent date at the top. You would just you know log into the patient chart, click on the proof sheet icon, and there you have everything for that day on your right side. So now that we have these thumbnails, let's uh, explain how we can kind of sort things, and then we'll actually look at them closer up. So, okay, so right now I'm looking in this default. Um, you know, all images view. I'm going to direct your attention to the second toolbar. There's these drop down menus over here. These are um, for sorting. So right now it's displaying all images. Um, if there are images that I wanted to sort of single out of interest, I can click on the star icon and you can sort according to that. Uh, it kind of works very similar to like, uh, you know, singling out favorite photos like on your smartphone. So you can basically click on these star icons, which is basically a favorites icon. And then you can come over to here and select favorites only. And then it just sort of narrows things down a bit if you want it to sort that way. And by the way, if you ever see a modality box and it's blank like this, um, you know, just don't assume anything's wrong. It's just basically how it's filtered. Um, so just assume that if you see a blank box, it's probably some sort of filter up here applied. So when I go back to my all images, you know, I'll see that one image for that particular modality. Um, this one doesn't have to do with sorting, but I'll cover it right away. It's, there's, I'm just gonna move across the icons here. There's a second icon, it's just a note icon. So if there's just something of interest, um, you know, that you wanted to just mark right away, you can just type in just, you know, a quick note um, and save it. And we'll explain, you know, looking at journal items later on, but anytime you log a note and annotation, <clears throat> excuse me, annotations, they all go to patient journal. So I'll do another one. 
So I'm just going to leave just a quick note about this, even though I can't see it, it's just a thumbnail, but you can leave a note in thumbnail view or you can leave a note in large view as well. Um, I'm just going to put one there. So anyway, that's that feature. Uh, the next thing, since, um, since we're going to go across here, this little icon, anytime you see an eyeball with a strike through, if you have the ability to see it, because not every account, you know, a provider's account may or may not have this ability. It's really up to, you know, your admin uh, or IT on your side, whether or not this gets turned on. But what it is, it's a hide button. So, um, so we design Harmony so that you cannot delete um, any patient record, any patient exam. You can essentially un uh, hide and unhide. So for example, let's just say that these fundus images, let's say two of them are just duplicate because it can happen, you know, the technician, whoever's operating the device, they can, you know, basically export an exam more than once and then you have a duplicate in Harmony. So if I click on this, uh, this strike through this eyeball hide icon, it appears like I deleted them, right? So they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. But um, if you wanted to get them back, it's pretty simple. There's a display all images and then there's this additional one at the bottom called all plus hidden. So now it reveals everything. And you can see that it was marked for hidden because it's highlighted in purple. So if you want to unhide it, you can just click again. And now it's basically revealed. So if I go back to my normal all images view, they're there. And by the way, these could be set. These are customizable where um, in your user preferences, you could actually have your default view be this one all plus hidden. This way you're never going to miss anything in case somebody hid something by mistake. Um, so just keeping that in mind. All right, so that's sorting. And then I guess the last thing that we, uh, involves sorting is the uh, laterality labels. You can see, you know, you can actually change laterality. These are simply labels in the lower left corners of these images. Um, you know, some of these might be incorrect because again, it's a sample database, but um, you know, these can be changed. Now, sometimes we cannot extract that information. So for example, I mean, I think every typical report, um, you know, kind of has this, you know, type of heading or header where you know you have like obviously your patient first name, your last name, ID, but but sometimes you know laterality it might be a, sometimes they actually have like laterality as like bullet points instead of text. So in time in times where we have something like that, you know laterality label might appear blank, but it takes two seconds to change it. If I wanted to change this to another you know to a different laterality, it's literally two clicks. So what am I getting at? It's it's kind of important if you want to sort according to laterality. That's what this drop down is. So you can sort by all, or you can single it out to you know, right side only, you can single it out to left side only, or there's this pretty neat split view. And this could be set as a, uh, a user preference so that when you log into a patient chart, this is what you see. You see the split view. It takes the whole modality, it makes a horizontal plane and it splits up left side and right side, um, but it's only effective if everything is labeled. So I just figured I'd point that out. All right, so now getting into the exams, right? How do we look at things up close? I mean, I already double clicked and showed you one of them. Um, but let's just jump ahead to multiple side-by-side -side comparison, right? So, so anything that's displayed here, you know, I just picked an entire day, but at, at before I went on the timeline and I did, you know, multiple dates for fundus images. So however you want to display your thumbnails, you know, have at it. But once you get to this point, now you can basically, you know, so select things, multiple selections. So single click anywhere on the body of the thumbnail and it selects this little check mark for you. I mean, you can check here as well. So single click checks it and another click, you know, unchecks it. So I'm gonna take these two fundus images and have them selected. You can see now that the two of them are checked off. We're gonna cover all these icons, but I'm gonna jump ahead to this middle one. So the middle icon, you can see it's a dueling checkbox. Uh, it says compare. And like, I, and you're probably seeing by now, if you don't know what an icon means, just hover over it for two seconds and it should display some sort of text. So when I click on side-by-side -side comparison, I get this simultaneous view. Um, now, Side note about the uh, toolbar here, it's, we call it a dynamic toolbar because some icons appear or disappear depending on what we're looking at. So two here just actually appeared because we're looking at two things side by side. And what are they? So the first one is swap. Sometimes when you manually select, you know, whether you're looking at two reports side by side or two fundus images or, you know, OCT, uh, B scans, um, sometimes they come up in like a reverse view or you may want to swap them. You know, obviously in the case of fundus images, you're probably gonna wanna see them like this, but sometimes they appear like this and you can swap. There is another one over to the left that pertains to simultaneous view, it's called sync. So right now I can move them individually by clicking my mouse uh, left button and dragging. I can zoom them with my mouse wheel. Um, but if I, wanna, if I wanna actually lock them in together, um, I'll show you how to do that. 
So we'll go back to this very first icon, it's called Refresh. It takes you back to when you first click on the media, you know, and, and so it sort of resets, <clears throat> excuse me, resets the view. If you click on Sync, it highlights it in purple. So that means it's active. Now I can actually move them simultaneously. I can zoom them simultaneously. Um, it works just as well. I mean, if you're looking at static images, it treats everything the same. You could look at, you know, you know, two, uh, excuse me, two visual field reports side by side, um, and it treats in the same way. And just so you know, you can compare up to three things in one row. Anything beyond that, then it sort of does like a two by two type of comparison. Um, so I'm going to go back actually out, and I'll show you what that looks like. And you can also see the second toolbar is kind of like a tab system. It sort of creates a new tab every time you open up something, kind of like opening up a web page. Uh, you can click on the X to close out of it. And again, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick three things uh, just to show you, you know, simultaneous view. So I have three things checked off here. I'm going to go back to that and it sort of displays them in a row. So, you know, for things like progression, yes, you can look at three different exam visit dates for a particular test and you can line them up like this if you want. Um, Okay, so that is simultaneous view. So let's look at large view and then we're going to get through the toolbars that way. I typically gravitate towards, yes, go ahead. Question. Um, so in that simultaneous view, I don't know if you showed this, but can you lock all three and then zoom in at the same time? You can, yeah. So um, what would be useful for that? So, I mean, actually I'll just choose three, I'll choose three random things um, and let's do that. So you can. Um, so when you're in, when you're looking at three things here, yes, you can kind of zoom in. I mean, obviously, it would probably make more sense to look at one particular modality, but you kind of get the idea. But you can lock them in all three of them and move them all together. So obviously, if you're looking at, you know, I don't know if this would be useful for visual fields tests and stuff, but you could do that essentially. Well, yeah. is that is that a default? How did you do that? Um, so actually. You can make it a default. That's a great thing you brought up. So we're going to cover, you know, user preferences. I'm just going to show you where they reside. But there's a user preferences in your dropdown, and you can make it so that every time you open up something in simultaneous view, it automatically selects this icon. It's called sync. But I'm actually manually selecting it in this case. Okay. I, I, yeah, it's it's not a it's not the most descriptive or you know looking type of icon. So I kind of hover over it, and it says sync. Once I select it, once it's purple, it means it's locked in. Now you can actually move them together. When you deselect it, then, then they become individual. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Sure. All right. So, uh, so that was looking at simultaneous. So we'll look at one exam in large view, and then we'll kind of it'll help me get through all the icons, and we'll look at more features. So, you know, before it's a single click, select it, single click again to deselect. So if you want to look at something in large view, just do a quick double click, um, and now we're in large view, and we do have a couple of annotations on there, which we'll get to. So um, let's kind of move down the line now since we'll cover all these icons. The first one we covered, that's just the refresh icon. It just takes you back to when you first click on it. Um, the second icon, it's a full screen. So when you click on this, it's as full screen as we can get it for now, um, you know, until uh, I don't know if it's going to change in the future. But I know our predecessor software, Synergy, it, it really has a full, full screen where you don't see any toolbars at all. But in this case, it gets rid of your Windows taskbar, gets rid of the, you know, your website shortcuts and all that stuff. If you want to stay in this view, but also see the exam list, you can do that. On the left side here, there's this little purple arrow or you know, highlighted purple arrow. You can just basically click on it and you can toggle your exam list on and off. Um, so we'll kind of stay like this, I guess. It looks a little bit cleaner. So for your other available images for this modality, you know, you can actually use your left and right arrow keys and see what other images are available and just sort of toggle through them. Or you can actually click on, you know, your, your images below here. These are your available images. So a couple of things for your workflow. There's a couple of different paths here. If you want to stay on the same modality, but choose a different exam date really quickly, you don't have to worry about going into this, you know, just drop down menus and finding a different date. As long as you're within the same modality, you can actually just click on this drop down menu and you can just swap dates. Um, so, uh, and then once you do that, you know, then your images below are only pertain to that date. So just keep that in mind. So you can also do a couple of other things too. You can go back out to your preview tab, of course, and then you can find, you know, other available. Now we're, we're, we're looking at images all from the same date here, but if you want to see what other images are available, you can go back out to your preview tab or you can stay in this view um, and then come out to, to here. And you can see other available thumbnails though, but, um, uh, but it's just for this modality for this particular date. 
So just keep that in mind. You can quickly swap dates here. Um, you know, click on this and you can see your other available thumbnails here. So whatever workflow works best for you. All right, so going down the line here, this icon you're probably not gonna use. It's a treatment icon. You're, this is probably something that's getting logged in the EMR, but essentially you can assign treatment notes. Um, you know, when you add journal items or you know, any kind of notes, it's, it sort of stays in the harmony space. Um, you know, again, we're gonna cover patient journal, but if you were inclined to use this, you know, the, these are customizable in the admin menu. There's a couple of sample ones here like injection or laser, you know, applying it to an eye and putting in text in the date range. But if someone were to use this and click on add, you know, it gets logged in patient journal, um, which you can open it up at any time and get to it and you can see your journal items, but we'll cover that a little bit later. All right, so we're probably not gonna use that one. Uh, so this, this is another one that's sort of a one-time setting. It's called resize. This is something that's set up in your user preferences, but when you open it up, I have it on fit size. That's pretty much 99% of the time what people want. Um, you can actually have it fit to the width so you can actually fill the left and right side of your screen, but it, of course it cuts off the image on the actually top and bottom. Sometimes exams, um, you know, people wanna see exams up close, like the actual reports. So I'll show you what that looks like. So right now this is like fit size, right? This is just fitting the whole thing. But if you change this to fit width, it'll be a bit more zoomed in like this every time. And then, um, you know, from there you can just sort of scroll. So, or click and drag, I should say. So, but anyway, once you determine what you want, it's pretty much a one-time setting. So let's go back to the front of this image though, because that'll get me through some of the other tools. All right, so anyway, um, there is a pan icon here. So that just tells me that I have the ability to move it. So if I deselect it, it's, I can't move it anymore. It's sort of locked in place. Uh, this additional icon here is a magnifying glass. So when I click on this, I can kind of click and drag. And this sort of depends on your screen resolution. I think it also depends on the resolution of the image itself. But as I click and drag, I get this circular region. It's in this case, it's almost really similar. It's maybe moderately magnified, but you know, you can take this magnifying tool and sort of click and hover um, if you were inclined. So um, this next icon going down the line is rotate. Uh, very rarely you'll have to use this, but we put it there just in, in the uh, event that uh, media does come into Harmony upside down. The only time I can think of that, there are customers that, um, you know, have anterior uh, cameras, you know, and sometimes they could be in the form of a smartphone who they're just basically putting it in front of the binoculars and taking a picture. And those could be held upside down and then you get an upside down image in harmony. So there is the ability to at least rotate something 180 degrees. This icon, um, I'm gonna have to figure out a, another patient to sample this on because I think recently somebody was messing with some old uh, images for this patient, but this icon is called historical compare. So this is another way to look at things side by side. The first time we showed you, we kind of manually selected things and we did two and three in a row. But this one is called historical compare. Now, again, it's a dynamic toolbar. This icon, it, I don't know, it kind of looks like an hourglass with like a split line. This icon only shows up when you're looking at a single image. So let's click on it. Here's what it does. And you can see, uh, I, don't, no, no, I don't know what happened to the orientation of my sample images on my right side, but we'll get to that. So here's what it does. When you click on historical compare, it opens up a whole new tab. You can see you can go back to your single image tab, but it opens up a new tab. It takes your, your exam that you're on and treats it like a baseline and moves it on the left side. And on the right side, it maintains the same modality, but it just gives you a prior date. So you can see here's October 1st, 2017. And then here's this you know, April 15th, 2017. And you can actually click here and change your date. So in this case, again, this is also not the best example. If you had like, maybe seven or you know six other or whatever, 10 other visits, you would actually see them here, right? But in this case, there's only two prior visits. It happens to be the exact same list on the both sides, on both sides here. But yes, you can pick a different date um, and just do a quick, you know, you know, comparison, you know, historical comparison side by side. And just so you know, this is a side note, when you click on it, it doesn't lock in laterality. I kind of wish it would. So if you want to just look at, let's say, right side comparison only, then you would come up to your laterality drop down and change that accordingly. Um, but yes, you can just basically toggle up and down and you can see prior exam dates. And again, it's only two different dates in this case. So yes, the list is the same on both sides. I guess it was easier to program it that way. And, um, you can basically pick and choose which side you want to remain static or the, versus the comparison side. So, and then of course, as I toggle through, this should only give me anything that's labeled right side. So. So again, um, you know, this is very useful for all different modalities, especially things like visual fields where you could just look at, you know, 
multiple uh, dates side by side. Um, all right, so that's historical compare. It's sort of a one-click thing. It puts you into this particular mode. Um, all right, so we're going to close out of it, and I'm going to go back and change this so I can look at all of my uh, lateralities again. All right, so so moving down the line, um, this one here, it's it's called adjust colors. There is some just moderate uh, post processing. Uh, maybe won't get used as much. Obviously, it's it's important to probably take the optimal image first. But yes, if you want to just do some moderate adjustments here and um, you know, and basically, you know, they perhaps change things so you can make things uh, stand out a bit more. You can do that. Unfortunately, this um, it's you can you can change these settings, but it's it doesn't save them to the image. Um, it would be nice if it saved it as a copy. I think that's something that could be in the works. Um, but anyway, when you do any kind of post processing in Harmony, it's just sort of as you're viewing it. So one additional thing, or a couple additional things, we added in here based on customer feedback. Um, you know, actually, Harmony has largely evolved in the last two years based on feedback. So uh, keep that in mind. We're very receptive to uh, criticism. So we added in these two channels based on a lot of customers that have Optos devices that do the full wide view Optimaps, you know, the retinal images. And their OEM software has these monochromatic red channel and green channel values. So that was something that was, you know, we were able to implement that. Um, so anyway. Um, that's also, you know, in the adjust colors, you can actually isolate, you know, red and green channels that way. All right. So um, now these next grouping of icons here, these these four, they all relate to annotations. Um, so the first one is since we already have some that were made, um, you can toggle them on and off. So that sort of answers the question. Can you see other people's annotations and, and notes and stuff like that? You know, the answer is yes. Um, so let's say I wanted to add a couple more. These two middle icons relate to the annotations themselves. The first one is numerical based or measurement icons or measurement annotations. So we're not going to show all of them, but I'll show you just a few. You know, you could do a freehand area measurement. So I can just click my mouse and drag and then, um, and then sort of freehand draw, you know, a region, for example. Um, and as I complete that region, it gives me the resulting area. And by the way, this, um, it's, we have a scale that's not applied yet. It's just showing things in this meaningless, uh, you know, unit of measurement called PX. It's a pixel value, but we didn't apply the resolution scale. But yes, for our images from TopCon, from competitor devices, we can apply a scale so that you get, you know, microns or millimeters, uh, depending on what we're looking at. So anyway, that's a freehand area measurement. And as you select your measurement tool, it sort of changes the icon so you know which one you're on. Um, you could do an endpoint distance, which is what we have on the screen. So I could just simply just draw a line, click and drag and let go. And then I get my resulting endpoint distance. Um, what else? Circle area, it just draws a perfect circle. So as you click, as you click and drag and then let go, um, you get your resulting area. And then I'll just show you a quick, you know, cup to disk ratio. We kind of do things a little bit differently than some of the competitors we have for this. In, in the event of a cup to disk ratio, it's pretty much like a freehand uh, drawing and then and I'm doing a quick and dirty job here, but essentially um, it takes the difference between the two areas. Um, so once you complete your second one, which I'm doing a really quick nasty job here, but once you complete your second one, you get this resulting area. Now, just so you know, before I show you the next grouping of annotations, because the next grouping are pretty much text based, right? These are just numerical based ones. Um, but there is a select tool. So again, there's four icons here. The first one starting with turning them on and off but there's a select icon where you can actually select it and then click on each annotation and you can make it stand out a bit more. Depending on the background, you know, our only color choices in this case are red and green. Um, you know, that's probably subject to change as well. It would be nice if they were, you know, user selectable as far as colors go. But anyway, those are some numerical based annotations. Now the next one, the next one is just simply as a generic title it just says annotate. Um, when you click on it, you have similar tools. You have your freehand tool, your line tool, your circle tool. Um, except when you complete the drawing, it's obviously no, no longer a number. You get prompted with a text box. And then you can just, you know, type in, you know, what's applied. And then once you hit, you know, add, uh, it'll, it'll put your text right on the screen next to that drawing or next to that markup. Um, the only different thing out of these uh, tools here for the, uh, for the text-based ones is this first one. It's a pinpoint. So it just simply puts crosshairs. Um, so you basically just you know choose an area where you want to just do a quick uh, click with the mouse, the left button, and then once you just do a quick you know click, it just automatically prompts you with that text box. And um, and I'll just basically just type something really quick. 
So as you type in text, you know, it's right where you click, it puts the crosshairs and you can just apply text next to that. So these are annotations in Harmony. Um, you know, pretty easy to use, you know, how you can mark up images. Um, quick, quick question. Yeah. Um, so at least in this, I haven't used it in Harmony, but in, in the Synergy version, mm -hmm. I haven't been able to delete an annotation once I've made it. Yes. Like, let's say you don't like the the cup to disc that you drew out. You can't okay. remove it. Right. Um, I'll show you that. It's a great question. Actually, it's perfect timing. So I'll show you exactly how to do that. So, um, so here's the thing. Unfortunately, you can't delete these as you go along. At least I haven't figured it out. Um, you pretty much have to make the annotations and then you save them. And once you save them, you can go back and delete them. It, it, it sounds crazy, but I'll show you. It's actually not too bad. So right now they're not saved. If I were to leave this image by clicking this, it would give me a warning. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. So the second to last icon is save annotations. When I save it, I get this little updated, you know, green, you know, icon. All right, so let's let's actually take a good segue to patient journal because I was I was gonna do that anyway. So, you know, any kind of journal items, annotations, notes, um, patient journal. So, and I'll show you how quickly it is to, to get to it. You know, I'm actually gonna make the, the point right here. I'm gonna go right all the way back to the very beginning, close out everything. Now you can get the patient journal anytime, but I'm just gonna show you, you can just jump over to it and you can get right back to where you were. You don't have to worry about finding the image because it's right here in patient journal. So patient journal logs in your journal items based on the date that you make the note or the annotation. And that's what this list is. It's saying, okay, this is the user account. And then what type of journal item is it? You can see we mostly made annotations. And then it gives you some quick preview text, some of which you can't see in here until you actually get to the exam itself. And that's what these hyperlinks are. These are actual, these are actually hyperlinks and it'll take you to the exam. So as I click on each one, um, it'll, it'll sort of tell me which one is which. So I'm clicking on each one. It's sort of highlighting in red for me, you know, which one is which. Now this gets to your question, how do you delete? That's what these X's are. So, so I know it's, again, I didn't have to close out of the image, of course, I could have stayed on it. But once you save it, you can then open up your patient journal and you'll see your journal items right here. And if you want to delete an annotation after the fact, you can. So, and it's sort of a one thing at a time. Um, Let's see, which one, which one am I going to do? One, one additional question. Another issue I've had in synergy with yeah. measuring is that the measurement has been off by a factor of two consistently. Okay. Like if you measure the optic nerve, it'll mm -hmm. be 0.75 as opposed to 1.5 uh, millimeters. Okay. And I don't know how to change it. Um, well, that's something, see, I don't know if that's user uh, customizable, but for something like that, I can have my... Um, either my support team, uh, take a look at that. Um, Cause that's something I don't know how to, to actually address. I don't know, I don't know if we'd adjust a factor, but um, I know in Harmony they've made improvements for, for accuracy, but, uh, but if, if we're still finding that, you know, we can definitely take a look at it. We'd have to sort of fix it on the back end. Um, but yeah, thank you for bringing that up though. Cause I know that's obviously a valid concern. We, so for example, the, um, a lot of the measurements in, in uh, for the, for if you have like an Optos device, I don't know if your practices do or not, but um, I don't remember seeing one. But anyway, in the event of like a, a device like Optos, we try to base the measurements, you know, off of their software as close as, you know, we can get it, if not the exact same. But anyway, yeah, in the event that that happens, we can have our support team look into it. Um, so, so I just want to point out too, you can delete your own journal items, nobody else's. So that's the thing. I, I know before I said you couldn't delete anything in Harmony. Obviously, you can delete your own journal items. But if I look at a different date here, this is somebody else's annotation from this, you know, February 15th uh, exam date. And, um, and there's no X. So just keep that in mind. And let me see. Let me just go through and highlight each one of these. And then just sort of delete them. I'm just going to get rid of these one at a time. Um, one thing I didn't point out yet. Um, yeah, so I'm basically cleaning this up now one at a time. So I'm showing you annotations as I click on it, it sort of highlights in red, but there are two other journal items that are not annotations, they're just generic notes. And I click on the exam date, um, you know, this one before I clicked on the little notes icon, you know, when it was in thumbnail view, but I clicked on the notes icon and I left a general note about it. So it's not an overlay because it's not an annotation. So just so you know, two places you can see your notes. Now, if you're just typing in something, just a couple words, you'll see it in a preview here. But if you're typing in something longer than that, you know, more descriptive, whether it's a sentence or even a paragraph, if you want to reveal the text box, click on this little arrow. It says show, and you'll get your text box. And it'll, and just make sure you're clicking on the right one. You know, so I'm 
I selected this exam date. And if I want to go to this exam um, where I left the general note, I would click on you know, the actual arrow here. And that text box applies to that image in the background. So, so that's just you know, some just quick notes. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to delete those as well. Um, and again, the hyperlink is kind of cool because again, you don't have to really worry about finding the image. You can just go right to journal items and just go right to that exam date. Um, and let's delete the last one here. So what it does is once I delete my entire uh, date of uh, January 21st, I now have the next you know, closest date that's opened up. But again, if you want to go to somebody else's work, you can go to their annotation and I just jump to somebody else's markup here. So, so that's patient journal. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yes, unfortunately, if you do make a mistake in annotation, you sort of have to delete it after the fact. Um, let's close out of this too. All right, and the thing is, we're now back to, we're back to just the final few features here. I don't really have to be in an exam in this case for this particular icon. The next one down the line is import. So if somebody wanted to import into Harmony, uh, you know, images or exams, maybe from a patient from outside of the practice, if they're new to the practice, they have prior exams from somewhere else, they can be imported. Or if you have a device that we could not integrate, um, you know, those could be manually imported as well. So you just need a file. So when you click on this icon, it's a little cloud icon with like a down arrow. When you click on it, you're in this manual import mode now. You get this whole new tab and you, it kind of looks different. So this is a manual import where you have to do at least two things. You have to choose the exam date. You know, so what are we importing? What date does it represent? Let's say it's you know, January 5th. Um, and then the device. We can create this list for you. This is sort of a curated list that we have to kind of create on the back end for you. But let's say, okay, there's a patient coming in or that has an exam date from um, January 5th and it was a uh, Zeiss Claris. So I have to have at least these two chosen. The procedure is optional. This is something that's sort of new. Like I said, you can actually have different procedure type categories underneath each date and that was fairly new. So this is optional, but we can create that for you as well. But once you have at least an exam date and the device, you can click on add images and it's gonna go to the most recent place you might've been looking through in your computer. In this case, my downloads folder. So once you get, you know, the particular image that you wanted to uh, import, um, once you have it here, you're, it'll probably, it'll sort of prompt you to assigning laterality. Like if I hit save right now, it's going to give me a warning that um that I'm that I'm missing laterality. So that's where I would change it, you know. Um, but anyway, once this is done with your thumbnails, once everything looks good, you would hit save. Now my demo site isn't 100% configured. There's a few things that don't work. But once you hit save. Um, what it'll do, it'll, it'll refresh and it'll populate your exam list on the left side. So if it's, if it's a new exam date, you'll see it show up. If it's an existing exam date, you'll just see that additional new modality for it. Um, so that's manual import. Um, and again, it's when I go out of it, it's this icon here, this little cloud icon. There is another cloud icon, but it has an upwards arrow. So the opposite of importing is exporting, right? So now if I wanna export something, it's just gonna go to my downloads folder by default. Um, you know, that, that can be changed. It just uses sort of Google Chrome settings. So if I want to, let's say, export one image, uh, which is kind of rare, but if I want to just open it up in large view, I now have the ability to click on this icon and I sort of get this secondary screen. Uh, this might change maybe in the future, but you don't really have the ability to change to uh, export as different file format types. It's, they're going to export as JPEGs by default. Um, but you can export original image, which is a little bit more decompressed. It's a larger file size. Your other choice is just a generic. It just says export image. No matter which one you choose, uh, when you click on it, it puts the image in, uh, you can see it pop up at the bottom of the screen here. It's just like as if you're downloading something you know, from a website, you kind of are in this case. But if you go to show in folder, there's the image It's just sort of sitting by itself. It's sort of outside of Harmony now. Um, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not basically deleting it from Harmony. You're just making a copy export somewhere else. So, so that's exporting one thing. You're not probably going to do it one at a time like that. So you can actually export from this screen. You can actually export all of your slit lamp images for a particular day. So if I highlight them all, and if I click on the icon, this is something else that's not working right on my demo site. But when I click on this icon, give it a couple seconds. And what it does, it generates a zip folder. The zip folder, only the zip folder itself has the patient demographics because you may be exporting multiple patients so you can know who is who. But once you export the um, uh, multiple files like that, 
your folder will look something like this. It'll, in this case, it's the same patient. It's, you know, the patient demographics are here. So once you go into the zip folder, these are the individual files. So you can really pick and choose whatever you wanna export. Um, <clears throat> all right, so anyway, yeah. So you can select one at a time, you know, or you can select, like I said, the whole date. Now the old fashioned way of exporting is printing. So, um, so I'll show you that. You can print, you know, if you're printing this wavefront analysis, you can just print it up. Um, probably gonna wanna turn off the Harmony header because it already has its own, but you're just gonna print the document just like you would if you were printing in a normal uh, scenario right from the device. So the quality is pretty much the exact same, um, but you'll print up a full page report if you wanna just print right out of Harmony. Um, now, you don't have to select, again, one at a time. You can actually select two, you know, both of these reports and then uh, choose to, uh, to basically print, you know, one per page. So you can do multiple page prints. There is this other option called proof sheet. Now that would obviously be more applicable to actual images. So, well, for example, if I wanted this, oops, sorry, I got lost in my toolbar scrolling. Um, if I wanted to choose all of these uh, slit lamp photos for this particular day, I can select all of them. I can come up to this print icon and I can say print proof sheet. And then I get a proof sheet of uh, all of my images um, for that particular modality, for just for that day. You can't mix and match days or mix and match modalities. You sort of have to stay on the same date and same modality, and then you can print the proof sheet like this, because um, otherwise it won't allow you. So, um, so that that covers core functionality, but there's a few other things to get through. Um, so again, I just want to show you. Um, you click on if you click on patients. Obviously, you're if you are operating Harmony on its own outside of the EMR. Yes, you get back to um, seeing a list view like this with patients. Otherwise, it would just be the one record. But anyway, you can see it highlights in purple the last one we were on, just in case you want to backtrack. Uh, we're not going to get too carried away with statistics, but you can generate reports based on, you know, what types of exams that we performed in a particular period, or you, you can actually make reports based on, you know, how many OCT exams did we perform in a particular time range, or you can sort of make reports based on, you know, patients themselves. So I'm not going to get too carried away into this, but this needs a little bit of updating on my demo site. There's a few things that kind of got broken a couple months ago. So disregard the red text. But all I'm going to do is just, you know, take like a far back, you know, date range um, and just basically do a query. And then, of course, you know, it's just some sample. There's not a lot of data here, but I can go back to this October 2017 date. And these are my exams performed in that particular month. Um, and then you can, the neat thing here, you can actually export this to Excel. So if somebody wanted to do a bit more intuitive number crunching, they can export this data to Excel, you know, or these can just be printed out of here. So that's just a nickel tour of statistics. I didn't want to get too, too carried away into that, but um, so it is there. Um, <clears throat> we're not going to really look at too much admin stuff too, but yes, you know, an, an administrator has the ability to add in, you know, user roles, um, um, you know, user accounts. So roles and user, users and then roles are actually different. A role is, um, there's like a technician, there's a scribe, there's a doctor, there's, a, there's an admin role. All of those different roles are assigned to user accounts and they have different permissions to access certain menu items. So for example, maybe a technician or even a provider may not really ever need to access stuff that's in the admin menu. So those could be turned off. So essentially, you know, if they were turned off, you would really see nothing. When you click on admin, it would just look blank. So you can lock certain roles out of uh, certain menu items. So we're going to skip over that. Um, this is also more for admin, but I just want to point out, yes, uh, records. So isolated patients, it's another way of looking at patient records management. So many cases, exams, they get captured under the wrong patient. They can be corrected here. So any in the event of like duplicate records or, or you know, exams captured under the wrong you know, patient, they could be fixed in this particular category. So I'm just going to show you just a really quick one. It'll take like you know less than a minute. So Connie Comprehensive, this is the master record. Um, when I actually hit the plus sign, these are actually the exams that belong to that master record, right? right? Um, so anyway, if one of these is incorrect, it was not supposed to be captured under her name. I can move it. Um, so once I get to the exam I want to move, here's here's also another Zeiss Claris, right? Um, I can select it. Once I select it, I have the ability to click on this now, and it says detach. And then of course, every time you make a move in here, it'll, it'll confirm. So now I have this exam, this Zeiss Claris, even though it has the demographics here, if you go back to patients, you won't see it. 
you'll only be able to see it in isolated patients, but it's an exam that doesn't belong to a master record. So we took that Zeiss Claris exam and we completely took it out of the, the master record. Now, if it goes to somebody else, um, if it's supposed to go to somebody else entirely different, you can actually search for that patient here, um, right? And then actually, I'm working out of order. You have to select it first. Um, once you select it, it narrows down your list on the right side and it tries to put it to similar matching names because more than likely it could be the same, you know, common last name. But anyway, if it's still, if it's not the record you want to put it with, then you could do a manual search. And if it needs to go with somebody entirely different, you can do that. Um, we didn't want to make it too easy to just do a blank query and get the whole list because we don't want, you know, somebody to make the mistake of attaching it to an arbitrary record. But if you do a blank query, you technically can. So anyway, I'm going to put it back to where I got it from. I have it selected on my left. I'm going to select it on the right. And once I can do that, I have this button here that says attach. Once I attach it, it's going to say, yes, are you sure? I'm going to, I'm going to say yes. And then it's gone from the isolated. It's no longer isolated. And if I hit plus, I could see that uh, Zeiss Claris is, oops, there it is, it's back in here. So that's how you move around records. It's pretty easy uh, once you do it a couple of times, but again, it's more for admin. I just wanted to show you at least the ability is there. Um, let's move ahead. Data transfers, your practice is not gonna be configured in this way, but yes, Harmony does have this ability to, uh, uh, to, uh, to communicate directly with like a PAC server and you know, orders could be placed into Harmony, but we're not gonna be set up in that way. So we're gonna skip this section. Uh, App Launcher is kind of cool. Now it looks blank right now. You can get to it any time, but we can put in shortcuts for locally installed applications on your workstation. So for example, you know, it could be review software for other devices. It, you know, if you have um, Heidelberg Spectralis, Heidelberg Explorer, because there are, so in Harmony, we, we pretty much took, you know, must have features from all of these different review softwares from these different devices, but we don't have everything. Um, there are some additional diagnostic tools that you might want to access in Heidelberg Explorer, for example. So we can put it in App Launcher as a shortcut versus closing out of or minimizing Harmony and going to your desktop and opening it up. The idea is that you can stay in Harmony, click on App Launcher, and you would see it show up here. But we can set conditions. I'll show you what it looks like. We can set conditions when the shortcuts show up. So if I go back to patients and I go back to a record, watch what happens now. I go back to App Launcher, and now I have this condition set that when you're in a patient record, then you can display your shortcuts that relate to, you know, ophthalmology-based, you know, devices. Um, so, you know, here's ImageNet 6, you know, here's, you know, Cirrus software, Heidelberg Explorer. So again, it has to be locally installed in your workstation, but if you want it, we can set this up for you. Um, it's just an option. It just makes it a lot easier. It's a lot less clicking around or, or minimizing things. Um, next, this is pretty straightforward. It's, if you get, go to the help menu, you have a manual. I couldn't get through every single topic because apparently there are a full 89 pages worth in the manual. Um, so we're just going to load that up right now. But yeah, you can see one out of 89. The good thing is uh, it does have a table of contents with hyperlinks. So if there's a particular topic that you want to go to, you know, you can jump to it. It's also keyword searchable. So um, I can hit Control F and get my, my, my find box and I can type in a particular topic and, uh, and jump to it. So Everything is in the manual um, for the most part. There are some admin things that are not there, but as far as general user functionality, it's fully covered um, in the manual. All right, so, and again, this is, I'll just show you this, but yes, there is, we do have our own support team. So um, you're probably familiar if you've used Synergy, but yes, it's the same support team, you know, so if anybody needed to reach out to us, you know, hit the help menu about and support and come down to here. And this is our info. We are in New Jersey, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Those are our hours. Um, so yes, uh, and I'll show you this too. Um, this is the very last thing, uh, but there is a drop-down menu for your preferences. Um, and we'll show you some of the things you can do. Now, this very first one, I'm not gonna go through every one of these, but the very first one, it pertains to if you're using Harmony outside of your EMR, you do have the ability to log in more than once. Um, and that's what this relates to. So if you're logged in in exam room one and now you're in exam room four, um, if you're logged into the prior session and not, the next time you log in, you'll get warned. And that's what this refers to. You'll say, hey, it'll say, hey, you're logged in in another session. Do you want to close out of it? Or if you leave this on close, you'll never be able to log in more than once. But if, I just want to point out the difference. If you are only accessing Harmony via hyperlink in your EMR, you're not going to have the ability to have multiple sessions open anyway. It's sort of a one-time instance. 
So this one here, um, before I didn't really show you all the different ways you can display exams, but uh, I have it listed on date. So I can actually choose this that every time I go onto a patient chart, if I choose, you know, list exams by device type, it'll display that way versus putting it by date. So it's really how you want to see it. Split view, I told you before, that's, um, it, it makes sense only when filters are applied, or sorry, not filters, but when labels are applied for laterality, then split view works better. Um, so a lot of times I just leave it turned off. And then of course, I'll show you this too. I didn't actually have this on at first because I, I feel it looks a little busy. Uh, then again, I'm not a provider, but if I go back to expanded view, right? So if I go back to my exam list and change it to expanded view, all the date fields are gonna be fully opened up every time I go on the patient chart. I'll show you what that looks like. So I changed that. Once you make a change in here, just make sure you hit save. And I'll show you what this looks like now. It'll look a lot different. Um, now look on the left side, see how different it looks and everything is opened up. So whether or not you like seeing it that way, fine. You know, But again, this, this of course evolved based on a lot of customer feedback. So for this you know, October 1st date now, everything is fully opened up and I can see everything in one shot. Um, and of course, I didn't show you this before, but you can list things by model type. So it has in purple fields, it has all the different you know, modality types and then they're opened up. And then underneath each one, these are your actual exam date visits. So however you wanna see this list. Um, so, all right, so anyway, that's that preference. What else? Um, oh, and then, yeah. Yeah, so um, in, uh, I know that from Meditech, you know, you have an icon that when you click on it, it'll automatically launch into Harmony, um, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's how it works for Synergy, if my, my understanding is yep. correct. Um, is the same thing in Epic? Yes, it will be. Yep. Okay. Yep, it'll be the exact same thing. There'll be a Harmony hyperlink. I'm not sure exactly, you know, where it's going to reside, but usually it's in the core patient chart. So that will be, you know, functional. Okay, just um, if you, someone would let us know where that is, because most of us don't launch it like that. Normally we'll launch it. It'd be nice to be able to do that um, with Epic, um, but, you know, we just don't know where that is. I mean, I don't, but none of us do. Okay. And this is Nikhil. Uh, it will be there. So right now in Epic, there's a link to OIS, right? And uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah Harmony is going to be right next to that, uh, at least okay. until we have both both of those, OIS and Harmony. And at some point, Perfect. OIS will be taken away. Thank you so much. Hmm? Um, so just well, and last... also um, in ahead, the Meditag, there's a little earth icon um, on the right uh, bottom. Uh, Karita is here. Uh, I see her name. Yeah. And uh, synergies, the link for synergies over there. Yes, Harmony is also. I so... can set up the. Um, we'll be replacing Harmony. it with Harmony. Mandy, good morning. Good morning. What did you say? We'll be replacing it with Harmony. When we go live with Harmony, Synergy will be outdated and it'll be replaced by the Harmony link. Wherever you see Synergy now, Harmony will replace it. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we'll also circulate a tip sheet. All right. So I'm pretty much towards the end. I'm just going to show you two more things. So the preferences page, there's there's two different tabs. There's doctor preferences, and then there's preferences when you get into the modalities, right? How do you want to see things displayed? So um, before I pointed out, yes, you can see you know just your normal all images, or you can always have a default where you're seeing everything, including like the hidden ones. So just wanted to point that out. And then your default image size, I always leave it on fit size of the screen, um, but there's also how you wanna default OCTs, um, you know, B scans. So you can actually, you know, choose these accordingly as well. You know, a lot of times they're usually selected on fit width since they're a very horizontal looking scan anyway. But, um, and that's the last thing I was gonna show you. I mean, I've been looking at sort of the same things the whole time, but if anybody wanted to see, you know, different types of, uh, you know, media, you know, we can cover that now. I was gonna try to get to, um, there is one for OCT on here, I just can't find it. Um, oh, here we go. So I'm gonna skip over to device name. I'm gonna go to Spectralis. Um, let me see what the resolution is like. It's only 25, but, but anyway, yeah, this is just a low resolution scan. So essentially, you know, the same type of, you know, you know, interactive B scans that, that exist in like, like Heidelberg Explorer, we can, we can basically export those files. Um, and basically import them into Harmony with some just sort of, you know, viewing functionality, you know, maybe a lot more of the diagnostic tools that you would see in Heidelberg Explorer, you would have to still access them there. But, um, but at least you do have the ability to, uh, 
to interact with them here in this in this view. Um, you can also look at them side by side as well. I don't really have two different dates though, but uh, let's see. So, question: mm -hmm. This is actually a really great feature. Okay, like that. This is actually really good. Um, do our photographers know how to upload? I mean, I'm, this may sound ridiculous, but I mean, do they know how to upload? these images because I, pref I, I presume you have to export the entire E2E file or whatever it may be. Yeah. With all of this information into Harmony. Um, and as it stands right now, the way they do it is they just basically take a screenshot because I don't think Synergy had this function or maybe it did and we just weren't using it. Um, mm -hmm. So are you running these types of things or at least our photographers, our photographers know um, uh, or uh, uploaders, whoever it may be at New York I Near know to do that because I, I don't know how to do that. So it'd be really great though, if, if that's how we did it. Yeah, so um, so there's actually, that's what's gonna be helpful when I'm on site because um, I will be going on site to help set up, but um, I, I honestly, I had to check with Nikhil, but I forget the plan is for training. I mean, I can also train on site because I'm not too far away from New York, but, uh, but anyway, there will be some sort of training for how to actually export from every device, including Heidelberg. And, and actually, uh, you know, I, so there will be cheat sheets. That's what, that's, that's what we're looking at right here. I make up PowerPoint slides and it's sort of one slide that you can print out per device and they'll be posted there temporarily. And it has the steps, how to actually get the, you know, how to send the report to Harmony. And then this is how you send the scan to Harmony by doing these steps. So, so yes, they will know. Okay, awesome, that, that's great. And I also uh, actually think Bob and Wanda already took the uh, training a few days ago. So maybe they already touched a point about this uh, 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 like function. So I yeah. can double check with them. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. I'll, I'll confirm that too. I just, you know, this is a really great kind of communication that you guys are doing. So it already really- yeah. um, that, that pretty much concludes. I know we kind of went a little over an hour. So sorry about that, but- um, but that's pretty much covers like core functionality. Obviously, once it's set up, you know, once you once you start using it, that's when you'll really learn it. Um, but you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and the good thing is, I'm always available for questions, so um, so you guys can reach out to me. <clears throat> excuse me, at any time.